Welcome, y'all! <laughs> That's right. This is the Pre-Game Engineer Tailgate Mayor Racing Podcast, episode number 31 for Saturday, January 16, 2016. I'm Tailgate Mayor Rusty Wallace, and I'm joined in the PETM Podcast Studio with uh, Pre-Game Engineer Andrew Sherman. What's happening, my man? Tell you what, 31 episodes, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm still learning how to use this microphone. Uh, <laughs> cheers. Yay. Go team. We'll figure it out at some point and fade this music out a little bit. Trying to remember how to use all this stuff after what, like a 12-day uh, hiatus Yeah, we took, we, we took way too much time off. Yeah, it's been a long time, and we've, uh, we've been working with a lot of people and stuff, and uh, you've been working Twitter big time. We'll talk about it here in a second, but... Uh, it's it's been really cool on the social media aspect. We've actually got to produce something to <laughs> help our people out. Yeah, no kidding. And especially we come we, we ran across the first situation where we were like, well, we were going to do it, and then something went wrong, or it didn't go wrong, but it's kind of like we got distracted, and then we were going to do it, and then we ran out of time because we had this other thing we had to do. Yep. And and then it's like, all right, well, we got to do it. Like we have to do it. We already said like we're going to do it three different times. Let's do it. We got to do the Let's thing. Actually, do this. We've been together for three days in a row now. Just <laughs> <laughs> that's what's <laughs> funny is, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're two hours short of having spent the last uh, what forty eight hours together, mm -hmm. and uh, we're just now getting around to doing this. But uh, rest Finally. assured, we're going to bring a fresh episode to you. Uh, and we, I think we have some fun things to talk about. We do have some fun things to talk about. Let's talk first about what we always talk about, what you're drinking on. What you drinking? We've been trying to start a hashtag, or at least I have on the podcast. Uh, we drink interesting things because we love craft beer, and we love trying new kinds of like bourbon-y drinks and whiskeys, and, and I'm sure we'll branch further out uh, into other spirits, etc. But today, what I have is uh, I have Wild Turkey 101. And I have Diet Tonic, but I have it in my freshly acquired Red Brick Brewing pint glass from today's adventure to one of our favorite local craft beer hotspots, uh, Red Brick Brewing, over in uh, West Midtown. We did spend some time at Red Brick Brewing. <laughs> Red Brick Brewing. Well, it's company. hard to say. It's kind Red of Red like Brick. A, <laughs> it's kind of a tongue twister. Uh, Y'all, if you if you can go to one of your local breweries, it don't matter where you're at, man, you you guaranteed to have a, yourself a good time. Well, they just seem to have it figured out in terms of knowing that okay, well, we got good beer, but we can't. We got to do more than that. Mm -hmm. We got to have a good atmosphere. Right. So they had live music. They had three televisions. Um, they have uh, tall top seating in their warehouse area where you can see the canning machine and you can see the brewing equipment. You can see the warehousing equipment, and they have like cornhole and uh, they've got other games. They got a ping pong table. It's really cool. It's uh, it's real fun to to hang out there and to chill out and uh, shoot. I'm I'm actually drinking a sweet tea right here while I'm uh, uh, sort We're of lose or I uh, know I know the sweet tea is just to to you know plateau me a little bit. But I've got the uh, the old standby, Mister Miller Light, right here, and I've got a new koozie. Yeah, but tell us about that koozie because that's pretty new rad. New koozie, thanks to my sister, who's uh, PETM podcast fan number one. I'm telling you. Oh yeah, she's the one that created this. Uh, not only the artwork, but also had the koozie made. If y'all see this on the on the periscope the there, periscope there. Yep. this is uh, original artwork. Uh, if you look at our podcast handle, you'll see a live shot of us at Atlanta a couple years ago when Casey won. Yep. Well, Rusty Srister created a cartoon or a caricature of that and then made koozies for us. So uh, well, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty neat. So what my on-deck beer is is a Sweetwater uh ipa local beer uh, uh local local beer different one uh i have uh, like i said a miller light here but i've got the koozie i got it for christmas from my sister and uh, it's fantastic so if you're into the the uh christmas vacation and and vegas vacation and just national lampoons vacation movies uh you'll remember from national lampoons vacation the uh wally world and the moose at Wally World that Clark Griswold punched at the very toward the very end when they finally got there and it told him that the park was closed, he punched it in the nose. Well, later on in Christmas vacation, you can see Clark Griswold 
holding, I think it's a mug or something like that. It's a glass uh, they dipped the eggnog out of. He and uh, Cousin yep. Eddie, <laughs> oh, Cousin Eddie are slurping on some <laughs> eggnog while Eddie's, I think he's trying to tell him about dog food or something. That's <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Eddie would be apt to do. But yeah, he's got the glass thing. It's like the moose-shaped little ornate glass yep. it's it's the drinking moose from thing. wally or the moose uh uh mascot from wally world and so my sister for uh for christmas got me this koozie of the wally world moose and and it makes me feel like clark, uh, clark griswold sitting here drinking out of it i love it and so that's on the petm podcast today that's what old rusty's drinking on that's pretty cool that's that's pretty cool that that should measure strong in the dale jr koozie game that's true. Yeah, that's true. That I did. Be. I did post the fish, and now the moose yeah. is uh, is yeah. rocking pretty hard here. So uh, let's talk about some shout outs. We've actually got some shout outs today. You know what shout outs means? <laughs> oh, we always love our goat. <laughs> we got our Shout-ing. screaming goat. You know, it, it really it showed. Up, it didn't really show up loud enough on there. So let's <laughs> try it again. Ooh, that looked there pretty good. There it goes. <laughs> So we got some shout outs. Let me let me back up a little bit because Sherwin, what you did uh, a couple weeks ago on the PTM Twitter handle, you said you put out a goal is what happened. I did. You put out a goal and you said, look, guys, we're shooting for 500 followers by the Daytona 500. And I uh, think we were in like the 230s or 240s. We were the, and I said, Sherwin has, uh, has lost. His oh, he's mind. lost his marbles. <laughs> he's over his head. He doesn't know what he's doing. Next thing you know, and we were like, like you said, two thirty, right? Well, next thing you know, we end up at three hundred. Next thing you know, three fifty, three eighty. We're like at three ninety last night. Woke up this morning. We're at the four hundred mark, and we've we've got what like six well, not six weeks, uh, three four weeks to go. And oh and no, we, we have uh, closer to six. Closer to six weeks to go uh, for for five hundred. And so if you're new. To the podcast, we love you. We really appreciate you, and we're fi- and we're shouting out to you this week, uh, coming up to number four hundred. And we do have number four hundred. That's uh, right. Yep, Miss uh, Miss Lynn. You can follow yeah. Lynn at M O O Y S M O M. That's uh, Moosey's mom. But she was our 400th follower. I believe she's a smoke fan, right? Yeah. Well, no, no. She's uh, oh. Jeff Gordon. Oh, she's I'm sorry. She's Lynn, hashtag follow. By- oh, you know what? I might have misspoke. You might be right. Uh, there's been a lot of hashtag 24s, and I think I just <laughs> screwed up. Lynn, I apologize if you end up downloading this episode. I think you're right. I think Lynn is absolutely a smoke fan. I'm going to click on her profile Oh, yeah. Big Smoke fan. Hashtag smoke will rise. That's Uh, awesome. Yeah. Lynn from Central Florida joined Twitter in 2010, was born on October 4th, the year undisclosed. (laughs) The year undisclosed. But uh, we appreciate every single one of you all the way through the 200s and 300s and everything. Of course, we we want to shout out to our milestone folks, but... Man, the 500 actually, uh, now I'm excited. I feel like it's actually a thing that could happen. Oh, I it's going to happen. I, <laughs> I mean, so, I don't want to say it with so much confidence that like I belittle the folks that have followed along the way because that's not it. I just feel like we've got enough momentum now. We're building the momentum that we need to get to 500 before the 500. And it's almost like at that point we need to do something like – Besides talk on the podcast about having gotten to 500, it's like it's a good point. Do we do a hat? Do we do a shirt? Do we? Is that when? It's a good point. What do y'all want to see? What do y'all want to launch have? the Facebook page? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> 500 is a huge deal. I I don't know anybody on earth uh, personally who has 500 followers. So for us, for everybody listening and everything, man, we love y'all to death and thank you so much for following us. This is real cool. And we're at, you know, y- y'all, we're just having fun. So if you're listening, you want to, you want to have some fun with us, uh, shout us out on the, on the, uh, Twitter or the, the G chat or whatever it is. Yeah, for sure. G chat. Um, <laughs> you know, we got the Gmail over there, the P E T M podcast at gmail.com. The thing is we, we want to try to encourage a little bit more interaction on Twitter. We get some, we got great guys like Kenny 
and Kevin, who will talk to us, uh, that are racing guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we like to tweet out about what food we're cooking and all that stuff because we love food. Basically, we want to talk about and tweet about and interact about the things that we love, which is racing, NASCAR, food, beer, spirits, <laughs> fun. You talk about food. All of the things. One of the, one of the things that has delayed us was last night we actually had a choice between, all right, do we podcast or do we – uh, work on a smoked salmon and smoked uh, surf and turf with yeah. smoked salmon and smoked tenderloin. And y'all, I, I, I hate to uh, I hate to admit it uh, that we neglected the fans here, but boy, did we eat good. <laughs> Sometimes you're forced to make a decision. There's an either or circumstance, and we chose uh, the either that was. Eating delicious food ahead of going to see a, one of our favorite comedians downtown. Uh, we'll shout out to Joe Rogan. I don't know that there's much crossover, uh, but he is an extremely funny comedian, willing to push the limits uh, in terms of social norms. Quite funny. If you remember Fear Factor, he's the host of Fear Factor. If he you're was a UFC the host. fan, he is the... The commentator, the main commentator for on UFC. the pay per view, he's the yep. lead commentator on all the pay per view. He was also a main character on News Radio, which is available on Netflix. All I think six seasons, mm -hmm. it's like third, it's like forty something episodes, or something. So we've uh, we've got another shout out today, though. Before we uh, get on into NASCAR, we got a shout out for Reese Nobles, uh, and the uh, the. Twitter handle is at around the Reese, and that's R E E S E. Tell us about Reese Noble, Sherman. Yeah, so Reese is a guy that I stumbled upon the last few days. That is, uh, I don't know that he's independent media as much as he's just he's a part of fledgling NASCAR media. He wrote a great story that I read, and it was a very well written article about um, you know the vague perception that people don't know anything about racing. Just assume that everything racing is NASCAR and everything NASCAR is racing. And it was kind of like a little bit of an education for folks that go, oh, wait, you know, there's the Indy series, there's ARCA, there's NASCAR, there's and Formula One is this whole other thing that's dominated by the European market. Um, and, and like, you know, talking about how, you know, there's one Formula One race every year and it's in Austin. That's why you got to go. There's only one. It's a different thing. Um, just kind of saying, look, everything racing isn't NASCAR and everything NASCAR isn't what racing is. So you kind of be, it's worth your time to educate yourself because it could be that you find something in racing that you would enjoy. You know, maybe it's your mm -hmm. local short track where they're doing super late models on pavement, or they're doing super late models or dirt late models or outlaws or sprint cars on dirt or, or even on pavement in some cases. There's just there's so many ways to consume racing. It doesn't it doesn't always have to be NASCAR, even though NASCAR is sort of the front runner in celebrity and status and uh, attention uh, in America, at least. Well, so Reese, we appreciate you following. We we're glad to see you and everything. Uh, let's uh, you know this is a NASCAR podcast. We're about 13 minutes in. Let's talk about NASCAR. <laughs> well, 13 minutes in. Now that we've chased everybody away that would have been maybe just purely a nascar fan <laughs> we'll talk about some nascar because that's kind of the forte of the show that's what we know the most about that's what we're the biggest fans of and when it comes to auto racing um and that's the really the the premise of the show is we want to talk about nascar we want to talk about nascar in a way that you don't hear from traditional media or someone is getting paid by a news source to produce a story or an opinion or an idea we just get to say whatever we want yeah, we got nobody to answer to. Let's start with this. Today's A.J. Foyt's birthday. Did you know that? January 16th? I sure did. I tweeted it out. Yeah. Uh, the original, I'll call him Marathon Man. <laughs> uh, the original tough as nails, baddest SOB on the planet race car driver. Absolutely. So, happy birthday, A.J. Foyt. Uh, and if you don't know, I mean, he raced in every series possible and won. And won everything. Every series possible. Yeah, he won every, every <laughs> yeah, he won in all of it. And that's why there's probably a ton of smoke fans that don't even realize that he rebranded himself the 14 because 14 was AJ's number. Oh yeah. He and was the like, smoke before smoke. 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 Yeah. He, smoke idolizes AJ. Tony, like AJ is his hero, like times 10. You don't even, I 
I hope he talks about it someday. Mm-hmm. I hope Tony talks about more about what AJ meant to him. It's uh, yeah, it's really cool what AJ did and everything. While we're talking on smoke, let's talk about smoke at the Chili Bowl. <laughs> How about this? How about this? If you're a drunk patron at the Chili Bowl in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> How about you don't talk smack to Tony Stewart, all right? Especially <laughs> or do, because we got a story or, about it Especially now. when he's, like, a paid officiator of the event. He's helping prep the surface. He's, like, an official um, employee of yep. the Chili Bowl. Uh, how about if Tony Stewart wants to answer <laughs> to you heckling him, they're going to let him do it, and he did. <laughs> What's funny about it, so if you don't know, what happened was some fan was – Talking smack to Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart got up into the stands and called him a kitty cat in <laughs> in yeah meow meow much worse uh, words than that. You can figure it out on your own. But uh, I I what's interesting about this story? I haven't seen anybody say anything negative about Tony in the whole ordeal, which is a well, great. Yeah, throw back to the, this is how NASCAR is. Well, he some some people did. I we actually got involved yeah. in a Twitter war, not Twitter war, because I wasn't involved. But I read a Twitter war that I'm not. There's no reason for us to promote. But uh, ask TJ, the IndyCar writer from yep. previous life and all that stuff. Got or no, it was the cone. It was the orange cone. Okay. It was a, it's a funny parody account that mostly is involved in NASCAR. Um, you know, I had a interaction with a guy that was like, you, know, you got to see both sides, but both sides for him was like, one is completely inappropriate and one's normal. It's like, I ah, can't, you know, I'm not sure you can do that, <laughs> you know, but, but to your point, most people were like, yeah, smoke's being smoked. Guy was acting like a jerk and smoke called him a jerk. Called him out what's on a, it. Yeah. Like, what, what's, uh, uh, what's a big there deal? Was, uh, the only physical part of the confrontation was the the guy that was being a jerk grabbed both of Tony's wrists. And then eventually, after Tony uh, called him his favorite feline, <laughs> pushed him a little bit, and that's when security stepped in and kind of knocked the guy down in his chair and was like, no. And then Tony got back in his face, and none of that audio, uh, somebody was recording on their phone, obviously, from a couple different angles, but none of the secondary audio uh, is uh, what well audible let's not legible available because, yep. yeah you, you can't hear what he's saying but it's pretty obvious he's berating the guy and saying look you want you if you want to heckle somebody you better own it right right <laughs> own it and then get your butt whooped by tony stewart right and, <laughs> and if anybody has anybody watched nascar last 10 years thought talking smack to tony was a good idea especially if like he says well if you don't shut up i'm going to hit you Right, because he, he may he's very well hit done you. that several times. <laughs> so uh, while NASCAR was watching, he punched Kurt Busch <laughs> in the trailer with NASCAR brass. <laughs> all of them there, right? So, <laughs> and and in this instance, uh, like you said, maybe there's some folks online who who want to berate or whatever. But hey, this is this is still NASCAR, man. When it's NASCAR, shoot, anything can happen, and uh, and let it happen far as i'm concerned anyway yeah uh another nascar news ryan blaney and the wood brothers man to me this is the absolute coolest news of the off season i agree the um, silly season we're in it yeah the wood yeah this is like the silly season when there's not races going on because it seems like lately the silly season starts in april but you know ryan blaney young upstart uh wood brothers announced last year they were gonna seek uh, guidance and assistance from Penske, which everybody thought was a great idea after the the year mm-hmm. that Brad had, even when he was still on the Dodge. Yep. And then the year that both Brad and Joey had last year or the year before where they won, I think, seven races. Uh, Joey was extremely competitive again this year. And uh, Blaney was very competitive in the races that he entered this year, but it was only like 12. So as I'm hemming and hawing and stalling, the Wood Brothers have announced that they are going to go full time racing for the first time, I think, since Elliot Sadler was in the car in like 2001 or 2002. Uh, don't hold me to that because Ricky Rudd was in that car for a period of time where I don't know if they were full time or part time. They've basically been part time for the better part of a decade, but they're going full time racing with Ryan Blaney, a rookie who is eligible to win the Rookie of the Year because he has claimed that he's going to earn points in the Cup Series. So we're going to have Ryan Blaney versus Chase Elliott versus Chris Buescher 
for rookie of the year. Twenty sixteen cool. shaping up pretty good. That's pretty cool. And, and I, yeah, I mean every every time we have somebody announcing that we're we're running a full season, man, that's that's cool to have more competition in, to have more uh, uh, teams in and drivers in. I, it's good to see. Yeah, well, and I mean, you've got so much. You've got so much historical perspective. The Wood Brothers—they've been racing since Wood the Brothers, 40s. Sure. Like that, I hope this stirs the pot for the traditional race fan that couldn't figure out who to root for in the late '80s, the '90s, even maybe. Maybe they saw Elliot Sadler win at Bristol in the '21, mm-hmm. and were like in the Sicko car, and were like, "Whoa, man, Michael Walter raised that car, and, and Elliot Sadler raced that car, and cool." Wood Brothers have been around for 50 years, like. It's just there's so much cool stuff that can get stirred up. I hope that the the people that may have given up on NASCAR, uh, particularly the folks that may be Gordon fans, it's like, yeah. you know, we've been trying to figure out or help our friends like, oh, and I was a Gordon fan. What am I going to do now? And I'm like, why don't you just root for the car? Like, yep. forget trying to drive a, find a driver. Root for the 24 because you know what? The guy that's getting in that car is also a legacy. Mm-hmm. And he's probably going to be good. And probably like going to be real good. And he, he's going to represent he's got a the car, underneath his the owner, and with. the sponsor as well as anybody ever could. Mm-hmm. He is the southern version of Jeff Gordon. Let's not forget Jeff Gordon came from San Francisco, y'all. He's from Vallejo, <laughs> California, which is about eight miles from Sonoma. That's uh, I, I just got goosebumps when you said he is the Jeff Gordon of South. I uh, I think he you're right. He's number one. Uh, he's a legacy, and so uh, not only is he a great driver, but he can also carry that, which helps him with the sponsorship deal. Which is uh, you know the that was Jeff Gordon's biggest legacy. Probably is stepping up NASCAR uh, in terms of sponsorship and taking it to the next level. Uh, well, it was being able to step in front of an audience mm-hmm. and a major corp- American corporation. And eloquent, eloquently deliver a message, and they're like, "We want to give you money." Right. That's a Jeff Foxworthy joke right there, ain't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> that is. I mean, that is a Jeff Foxworthy joke. Have y'all heard? Uh, I think he pushed put it out in '97. It was like, "Why does everybody, you know, why do NASCAR fans hate Jeff Gordon? Because he enunciates. He enunciates. Because <laughs> he can speak English, right? <laughs> and because he could speak English very well and drive a car very well, he received maximum sponsorship in an era when there were only a handful of drivers who could do that Mm -hmm. so one other thing a little closer to i want uh, maybe closer to our heart closer to the chest here uh everybody on the ptm podcast that's listening to us knows that we're casey fans and casey announced in the last uh few days that uh, uh panasonic has picked up his primary sponsorship yeah tough books on board for two races it's a really neat looking blue uh mostly blue but white fade to black paint scheme and it makes a lot of sense because they were on jeff gordon's car i think for both texas races i want to say and it was kind of a it was a it was a competitive interest sponsorship Mm -hmm. because remember dlp and texas instruments they're in dallas the dallas they had i mean they had blimps and stuff yeah oh yeah and and the panasonic thing makes sense because panasonic has a very large uh, presence in Peachtree City, Georgia, which is only about 10 miles from Atlanta Motor Speedway. And Panasonic Tough Book's going to be the primary for Casey's car at Atlanta uh, come February 28th. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. Let's uh, let's move on. So this week, we didn't uh, – the last three weeks, we've been dropping knowledge on y'all. And – we talked about F knowledge. <laughs> we talked about <laughs> wedge. We talked about track bar. We talked about tires. Yep. Let's uh, let's take a little hiatus this week because we're we're ramping up. Uh, how far are we from Daytona? I mean, we're we're not all that. It's far. crazy. Uh, pretty sure I sent out a tweet on the podcast handle yesterday that we would like to salute Brian Scott's entry into the uh, Richard Petty Motorsports fold. And they're rebirthing the number 44 they used back in the Mm -hmm. 60s and 70s. And even all the way up uh, until the early 2000s. So they're dumping what was the 9, which is near and dear to our heart for a lot of reasons. But Brian Scott's going to run the 44 for Richard Petty Motorsports in the Cup Series. And what that means is today, (laughs) we're 40, including today, we're 43 days 
from the 2016 Daytona 500. So, Eric Amarola, eat your heart out. Let's go get some sausage and bacon and Smithfield Farms and all that good stuff. Good rich or whatever it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ran out of steam. Uh, I like Eric Amarola, so. And the Richard Petty blue lives on. So, I'm seeing, is it 43? I'm seeing uh, 35 days. Can I not add? Maybe I can't add. 35 days, 16 hours, 56 minutes. Oh, my goodness. I'm a counting. week off. I'm a week off. My bad. So, uh, so Chris Busher, a beautiful thing. And your new ride with Front Row Motorsports, your full time committed ride with Front Row Motorsports. Uh, good luck, man. You drove that car last year under some really strange circumstances. We're hoping that you give Chase and Ryan Blaney a run for your money. So, instead of dropping knowledge on you this week, I figured we'd take a little detour and let's talk about what we're looking forward to in 2016 looking forward to in this season and i'll go first yeah go ahead but uh and, and let I, me get I'm, the wheels turning yeah, while you're well, talking i'm, I'm gonna take it completely different because i know where you're gonna go with it we talked about it in pre-show those of you on periscope probably saw us but uh i'm gonna take a little bit different turn i'm gonna talk about some drivers okay my number one driver tony stewart tony stewart is retiring this season please win the daytona 500 tony we want please. I want to see Tony, and I really love that the news about the Chili Bowl came out, and he's getting excited, and he's getting turned up, and and it feels like Angry Tony's back. And if you if you love NASCAR, you love Angry Tony. Well, the only thing you need to know about his interaction at Chili Bowl is that he had a reaction, mm -hmm. which means all right, Tony kind of feels like Tony's back to being Tony, and when Tony's Tony. NASCAR is a better place. Absolutely. So if this is the last year that we get Tony, I want to see Tony, Tony, or Angry Tony, or whatever you want to call I it. I want to see that interview with Steve Burns. I yes. mean, God bless Steve Burns <laughs> and his family, but that, like, just mouthing off. And then Steve <laughs> Burns, well, thank you, Tony. Tony going, thank you, Steve. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> so I want to see Tony be Tony and I want to see Tony win some races and I'd love to see him obviously in the chase and see where he can go. Oh man. Uh, I just... Cause how fun was it to watch Jeff Gordon at the end of this last season, regardless of, you know, uh, whether he makes it in the end, but when he won at uh, Martinsville, he got to Miami and uh, look, I just got goosebumps. You see him, uh, the whole that was deal. insanity for oh, him man, to win fun. in the playoff version of today's championship in his final year. Like, let's talk about who did that that we know of recently that retired. I'm done racing. I also won a race in my final year. Dare you to find one. Yeah. So it it's really cool. Uh, he pulled a John Elway almost. I'm gonna... I mean, in terms of I'm as competitive <laughs> as you could possibly be, and yep. I'm going to retire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's been a few, maybe even UFC guys like uh, Anderson Silva's trying to do it a little bit. Or but he's coming back to fight. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, yeah, you really want to see dirty somebody get his ass whooped. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of a U-turn here on somebody that you and I have both not liked in the past. Uh, take a guess. Who I want to see really whip butt this year again. And I said again, so that might help. Oh, Kyle Busch. Uh, no, a little bit different. Joey Logano, man. Oh, Joey. Joey. Oh, yeah, we used to give Joey all kinds of hell. Yep. Now I like genuinely like Joey Logano. I do, too. I want to see Joey uh, really make it. Uh, I mean, I know he made it pretty far, and he made it in the end of the chase and all that. I'd like to see him just be 100% and see what his 100% is against everybody else's, where he doesn't get wrecked out, where he doesn't have all the mess with Matt Kenseth and all that stuff. Really enjoyed watching him and think he can make it all the way. Absolutely, and absolutely. Let's go ahead and, I mean, while we're just talking here on mm -hmm. a microphone, let's throw out all this crap about who's the next Jeff Gord, who's the next Dale Earnhardt, who's the next Tony Stewart, who's the next Jimmy Johnson. None of that crap matters. Uh, I hate it when they talk about it in basketball, uh, and I'm not even going to – Go down that white rabbit hole. <laughs> just you know what? If you uh, if you're a Jeff Gordon fan and you're like, I'm trying to figure out a way to hang on to NASCAR, but I'm not sure I can do it without having a guy to root for. Yep. 
and you, you're like, I don't know if I really want to root for Chase Elliott. Maybe you don't like Chase Elliott. Maybe you didn't like what he did to Ty at the uh, Ohio Motorsports Park when he dumped I mean, him you know, in the road a whole course. Different thing. That's fine. Yeah. Joey. Joey. If you're not going to get on Chase, Joey. Like, the guy's completely likable. Uh, he's got a cute little wife that he's obviously <laughs> very fond of. Not that that matters one way or the other. He can race a car. He grew up the hard way. He got in a car at 18. Okay, He got in the fastest fendered car on earth, the most challenging to drive fendered car on earth at age 18, and he won twice and was fired. Tell the tell and the new has, listeners of PTM Podcast what we used to call Joey Logano. We, I, and we're going to take all the credit in the world for the person who created the parody account, but <laughs> we called him Joey Last Place. Yep. Last, it just it just fit. It was like Joey Logano, Joey Last Place. Yep. Like all we had heard from Mark Martin and everybody else and Joe Gibbs was that Joey Logano was the next best sliced thing bread, since baby. sliced bread. Like somehow sliced bread is some like – <laughs> <laughs> who's the comedian you got the bread you got the knife slice the effing thing like oh it was carlin i mean it's uh, the, the godfather of comedy like uh you know it's like it's not that big a deal what's compared but joey has been everything that he was talked about since he got to penske i agree yeah it was i think it was all that like you said it's it was all that hype and then we didn't really see it happen. He won a rain out race, which then even Loudon as a rookie PO'd us even more. Like that's not really a win. Come on, man. And yeah, it doesn't count. That's like Almirola winning Daytona. Right. And so it was like I'm just not seeing it. And then all of a sudden, uh, maybe not all of a sudden, but after Penske, now he's winning races. Now he's contending for championships. I think Joey Logano not just one to watch out for. Whatever the the pundits will say, I'm. I'm looking forward to him having a successful season this year. He's a top five race car driver right now, today. Yeah, absolutely. So my number three, what I'm looking for, new baby daddy. <laughs> well, we hope so, for we sure. We hope so. You know, the PTM podcast is a fan of Casey Kane. And, uh, and so hopefully he is out of whatever rut happened last year. Uh, it, man, he's so talented. And he's in such a strong team. And we know he's talented. It's not like he lost everything that he had uh, six years ago when he was winning six races a season, winning one-sixth of the season's races. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you – if uh, when when Ray Everham is challenged to talk about Casey, like, honest opinion, you know, this isn't going into print where you just say what you say and he'll what he'll tell you is – like, he'll say, oh, is Casey, like, 2008 Casey with no wins or is Casey 2006 Casey with six wins and he'll say 2006 every mm -hmm. time yeah so as a fan I want I'm you know this is a fan podcast so as a fan I'm hoping Casey really steps up this year and uh, and shows us something because he's he's still got a decade of racing left and can be a a, a contender for championship Anytime he wants to be, he's got the talent. The other guys in Hendrick, I mean, they're, you know, uh, Wade Garrett's getting old, man. <laughs> yeah, but Wade Garrett, the oldest one there is Jail Jr., and he's only 41. Right. Dale Jr.'s getting a little older, though, you know. Now, now Hendrick will keep Dale Jr. on as long as Dale Jr. wants to be in a race car. Uh, that's, same with Jimmy Johnson. That's a cash cow. Uh, same with Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but they're winning, both of them, four races last year. And and in championships and stuff, so yeah, yeah, nothing you can do. I, I shouldn't say nothing you can do. Those guys are are as good as they ever was, you know. So, Junior's as good as he ever was, absolutely. Yeah, I think competition may have caught up with what Jimmy and uh, Chad Canals are. That's a good point. That's a good point, and and I think it's important that you say Jimmy and Chad in that uh, in that sentence. Yeah, because for uh, sure that that driver crew chief deal was something that they had that was special that I think is – you're right. It's it's becoming a little more common uh, as, it, you know, once people find that relationship, find that that groove that they get in. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then speaking of offices and moves, and, of course, I started this conversation without being able to remember the exact name, but you know, former crew chief of Denny Hamlin, former crew chief of Carl Edwards has come back – to Hendrick as uh, sort of an executive 
overseer of manufacturing, maybe a right hand man or twin to Kenny Francis. Mm-hmm. Uh, why is the name eluding me? Darian Grubb. Darian Grubb. Darian Grubb. There it is. <laughs> uh, back with Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, I, there's probably plenty of people that don't realize that Jimmy Johnson's first Daytona 500 win came after a Chad Canal suspension. Darian Grubb was the crew chief. Mm-hmm. So I, so Sherwin, that's what I'm looking forward to. And like I said, I'm I'm talking about the driver aspect. I think you have another perspective on the whole thing. Tell us what you're looking for in 2016. Here in a few weeks, starting with the Daytona 500, when the PETM podcast is going to have 500 followers. That's right. We're going to have 500 followers come Daytona 500. Um, well, the thing I'm most looking forward to is, so we farted around all year last year with this new aero package, and yep. we talked about it, and everybody B-worded about it or whatever they did, or they said it was good. They said well, you said the bad. right word. We damn sure farted. We <laughs> farted around with it. I mean, they farted around with it at Kentucky. They farted around with it at Michigan. Weren't really sure what it was. No, Michigan, excuse me, was that ultra weird, like, nine-inch spoiler right. thing they did. Uh, and they did that at Indy, too. It's like, what are you doing? And uh, they tried to turn those into restrictor plate races, which is a really bad idea. Sidebar. Uh, but I'm looking forward to, like, okay, so we have 22 intermediate races of the 38. Uh, that includes two exhibition races that are going to be with this new low downforce. Yep. Got, like, a three-and-a-half-inch spoiler um, I don't think they did anything with the ride height because they eliminated ride height last year, but they've, they've moved in the front splitter. So they've taken downforce away from the rear and the front, and we're going to have enough races to actually for teams can adjust and figure out what to do. Like, okay, so maybe I need to tune the motor a little different. Or like we talked about, those other components, the hard yep. components, track bar, shock. Oh, we didn't talk about shocks yet, but track bar, spring rate, and – uh, wedge and yep. how those all come together tires. to produce and tires to produce mechanical grip and aero grip. And I'm glad that we're going to get a full season under our belt with the thing with the low horsepower and the low downforce. I'm curious to see, are we going to see the guys that really heart, like really harp that this is the right thing to do is Carl Edwards going to come out of the gate and win seven races this year. Is it going to make the car harder to drive? It's supposed to good. And is it going to help? the the whole situation we had in the last couple of years uh with the leader just being able to take off it's supposed to see and that's i if you're a nascar fan you got to be looking forward to that yeah well the biggest thing that the low downforce package was supposed to do is and and, and Keselowski was one of the most outspoken guys that said look in today's package mm-hmm. the way we're sucked down anybody can go through the corner right so it's how fast does your car go down the straightaway, mm-hmm. and how well do you manage tires? Can you pick a line for your shock and spring setup that allows your tires to last longer? That was Brad's thing was just saying that it takes less talent to drive these cars. That's what he said. Yep. He said it takes less talent. And Carl always alluded to that, but he never wanted to be that blunt. Yep. Because Carl's not that blunt. You're he's right. He's Cousin Ed. That's what he does. Cousin Ed. It, he's a marketing <laughs> genius, but he's also a little bit bland in a lot of ways in, in those but he's not stupid. He's very smart. And yep. He understands what the car needs, what he wants out of the car. He wants it to be harder to drive mm-hmm. because that separates. And that's why, I mean, we always diverge into this. That's why the drivers have always said year after year after year, they love going to Atlanta because the driver mm-hmm. has more impact than any other racetrack they go to. Right. And talk about who's good in Atlanta. Those are driver drivers. We're talking about Jimmy Johnson. We're talking about Carl Edwards. We're talking about Casey Kane. I, well, but Kurt think, Bush. Think about the guys. Tony. That, yeah. Think about the guys that have won. Like since we started being a fan, I think at some point we're going to tell Jr. our story. Yep. Think about the guys that have won since we really got into NASCAR, which means we went to Atlanta and we've been to Atlanta every year since 2004. And think about the guys that have won. Uh, especially the guys that have won more than once in that time, mm-hmm. same time stretch. We're talking about the Jimmy Johnsons, the Jeff Gordons, the Casey Canes, the Tony Stewarts, mm-hmm. the Kyle Bushes. Hamlin snuck one in there. Oh. Junior won one way back, the first one we went yeah, to. Kurt Busch. Uh, Kurt Busch got one. 
Um, and and you look Kurt at Kurt Bush had probably the most decisive win that I've it ever was seen ridiculous. in my life. It yeah. was he what led three hundred and three of three hundred and one by thirty laps, almost a lap. Yeah, it was ridiculous. But I mean, you know, the, there's other tracks that are starting to separate themselves as being similar to that. Uh, Darlington always was. Yep. Uh, it's starting to be, come back. Uh, Kentucky seems to be a place now where picking a line matters. Charlotte is starting to come back, even though, as we discussed in detail, they laid down that polymer-based asphalt that's yeah. just not supposed to ever wear out ever. Um, in Texas, but Texas has those weird bumps. It has, forces you to do crazy things with your shocks that like don't necessarily allow you to incorporate the whole driver picks the line because mm -hmm. the driver doesn't pick the line at Texas. Car picks the line. Driver just has to find where it's at. Yeah, and Atlanta's like, okay, well, first five laps, I'm run here. Next ten laps, I'm run here. And when I think and I'm going to be experiment. faster than everybody else, I'm going to run over here. You're going to run the high line now. You're going to run Go the high low in one line. and two, low in three and yep. four. That's Casey's route. <laughs> yeah. And whenever we see him do that, we start getting excited. We go, he must be fast. Let's watch the yep, stop. Found watch. something out. <laughs> well, man. Uh, would you, uh, I think just earlier, was it today or was it late yesterday, you just renewed something for the sixth year in a row? Is it only six? It might. Uh, good question. I'm not sure. 2016. 2016, 2010, that sounds about right. 20, 29, Five, six years. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Tell the, uh, tell the fans. I believe this uh, is, will be our seventh year in these seventh. seats. Okay. Um. Yeah, I renewed our seats to Bristol, the Whee! night race, which they moved, by the way. If y'all didn't pay attention to the schedule, they actually put Michigan and Pocono in between Bristol and Darlington, which is awesome for us because that means we don't really have any conflicts uh, to speak of. Uh, two weekends in a row was always tough with Bristol and Atlanta. Last year, we did have the break in between Bristol and Darlington, Yep, but uh, uh, thankfully... Uh, Rusty's beautiful wife has a yearly commitment on Labor Day weekend, which means we <laughs> get to have a yearly commitment to go to a racetrack. That's right. But Bristol this year is uh, the second Saturday night in August, I think. A little different than normal. Uh, I'm super excited. Every time you say, I just renewed the tickets, man, I just I get goosebumps. <laughs> I pump my fist a couple times. I'm... I, I know we're always going to do it, but it don't matter. Every time, it's just another thing to look forward to. Another thing to well, well and if Bristol, nothing else happens, if I lose my job, if I if I completely break down and all that, I'm still going to Bristol in August. That gummit. That's right. That's right. Even if the the year is a complete wash, by the time you get to the third quarter, you know that we're definitely going to Bristol. Yep. And Bristol is one of our favorite racetracks and I don't care for necessarily all the ridiculous uh, marketing with the last great Coliseum and all that stuff. But there really is, a, you know, if you're a sports fan and you've been around and you've seen some stuff, there aren't any stadiums like Bristol mm -mm. there. You will, there's only one place on earth. You can find an enclosed stadium that holds 165,000 people. And that is in Bristol, Tennessee. Yep. And there's a half mile racetrack that's banked progressively from 24 to 28 degrees or something like that. They turn a half mile and a change lap and just a shade under 16 seconds in qualifying. It's amazing. So, starting to close it out a little bit here, uh, my hat's off. Mr. Hans Gruber has uh, finally fell down the pit. Of uh, <laughs> in it doesn't matter from which era you know him. Alan Rickman is someone that should be celebrated. Uh, lost his life to cancer at age 69 this week. The uh, biggest bummer for me, man, is we've had some other deaths. We'll talk about them here in a second. But I, I haven't really followed. Uh, we'll say, you know, I'll, I'll break the ice here. David Bowie, who we lost this last week. Uh, uh, Lemmy. From Lammy, Motorhead a couple Lammy. weeks ago, yeah. I, but I felt like I wasn't looking forward to a whole lot of new, a whole lot of new stuff from them. Really, Alan Rickman hit me because 
man, he's just still had so much more to give, and it's it's a shame that he didn't make it in his seventies. Yeah, I was been trying to figure out for years how in the world they would resurrect him as the villain in the greatest Christmas movie that's ever been made, <laughs> Die Hard. For sure. Hans Gruber. Hans! Booby! Rest in peace, brother. That's for sure. So, uh, rest in peace, him. Rest in peace, we already said it, to uh, David Bowie, man. Uh, there's a world Golly, of under, rock. Under pressure. Under pressure. Under pressure. Boom, 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 uh, boom, boom, boom. F you, Vanilla Ice. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. But for a, a world without David Bowie is is a little bit different than it was before. Man, uh, dude it's, was talented. Talented beyond your wildest dreams. I uh, saw some Creative. And, I mean, they were fixing to do a labyrinth, too. I don't know if, what his relationship with that was. Yeah. Shout out Jennifer Connelly, Bubba. Woo-hoo. 26 Hello. years later, she's still smoking. <laughs> smoking. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, and it, it's a shame. It's a shame to have lost him. So, like we said, hats off to Alan Rickman, Hans Gruber. Uh, Sheriff he, of Nottingham. Sheriff of Nottingham. Apparently, he was big in uh, in the whole Harry Potter deal, but we're, we're a little bit too... Uh, Bottle Shock. Bottle Shock. boy, Dogma. Uh, one of my favorite characters uh, from uh, the movie Dogma. So, uh, yeah, man, let's celebrate that. We've got a couple birthdays to talk about. Let's shout out some birthdays. Number one, our esteemed producer. Your producer our, wa- our, <laughs> our wife, your producer. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, Serena, uh, the Frizz 11, T H E F R I Z 1 1 on Twitter. She is down in. Orlando. Blowing up Disney. Blowing up Disney. Follow her on uh, Twitter and Instagram, and you're going to see all kinds of Disney tweets and selfies. She does her, uh, she calls it her stupid selfie tour, and they're down in Disney right now, which is why we're here and going to Joe Rogan and smoking meat on the on the smoker. And uh, why are we smoking? Uh, I think we're doing a. Uh, uh, what is? Oh, it? you're talking about cooking meat. Gotcha. Yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> smoking meat, smoking meat. That's why we're smoking. <laughs> Uh, so happy birthday, Serena. That was, uh, her birthday was this last Monday, the 11th. So big time. Happy birthday to that. But we got another birthday coming up, man. <laughs> that is, yes, we do. <laughs> Mr. Pregame engineer here is fixing to have his, what? Seventh, uh, annual 29th birthday. Seventh annual 29th birthday. Uh, half, half a 70. As they say, half a seventy or on, halfway uh, this decade to forty. Woo, Ooh, Nelly! Whoa, Nelly! <laughs> yeah, uh, I believe it falls on a Tuesday this year, uh, right after the Super Bowl. Um, yeah, I don't know. I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna do. Uh, some of my friends are just leaving town, like they have a job or something. Oh yeah, I'm going to DC and Jerks. just and just leaving. But uh, maybe that Saturday <laughs> we can work something out. I hear there's a fun something. little craft brew thing going on. Yep, yeah, uh, right back to Red Brick where we just was. That'd be fun. But uh, yeah, so I've got some travel coming up, y'all. Uh, you remember? I think like episode four or five uh, was you're in Jerusalem. I was in Jerusalem. Like that's not a joke. <laughs> like the real Jerusalem. You had just Israel. visited like the wall thing, and mm-hmm. then we did the podcast. That's right. So here in, not this coming week, but the week after that, guess where I'm going to be again? <laughs> uh, Jerusalem? Uh, that's right. The birthplace <laughs> civilization, man. So I'll be back there, uh, and we got to figure something out and see if we can do a podcast then. No kidding. And my boss is in Tel Aviv all next week, so that's kind of a strange overlap. Uh, that is a weird uh, overlap. <laughs> but actually, it's not all that weird when we both work for Israeli companies. That's, for, that's true. Which is t- completely coincidental. Uh, it is. Uh, Lachaim. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Lachaim. <laughs> Shalom. Or that's whatever. right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm probably offending people. I'm not trying to do that. Uh, it's all good. Mazel tov, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shabbos. <laughs> Shabbos. Shomer Shabbos. Uh, so... I'll be doing that in a couple weeks, and then after that, I'll be in D.C. We'll uh, maybe do us a uh, uh, over the internet podcast again. We'll see what happens, but uh, we got some exciting. Maybe I'll just fly to D.C. and up. do it with you. Oh yeah, why not? <laughs> and it'll be your birthday week, uh, week, and all that stuff. We can figure it out. That's uh that's one of those ones that you can usually, you know, do pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Well, man. Well, what else? What do you want to close out with? 
Uh, we haven't talked at all about the NFL playoffs. We haven't talked about playoffs. The playoffs. So who do we, we don't know tonight? what's going on right now. But the Chiefs is it the Chiefs are playing the Pats? Uh, yes. They were losing what looked like to be fourteen to three going into halftime, which they're probably almost done. I don't. Uh, uh, I don't think we recorded it. So let's no, we see. didn't. There's no reason for us to record it because we're not right. fans. Of so we're team. just gonna break the news. But right it is seven. Here. 27, so we do need to consider... Oh, New England's whomping the... Whomping the crap out of them. Yeah, it's seven and a half minutes in the fourth, and New England's ball, they're up 27-13. So, that looks like it's going to be a a thing. Well, hopefully the Packers-Cardinals game this evening will be entertaining. Yeah, we'll be watching it. I think most people think the Cardinals have the upper hand. We'll be watching Because they have a healthy team and a really good quarterback. And let me, through my teeth, I'm going to give a congratulations to all of the level-headed uh, fine folks of Alabama football for their championship uh, this year. Uh, you should know that I was certainly rooting for Clemson, but uh, I understand, you know, to the victor go the spoils. Absolutely, absolutely. And I can't wait to go back to North Carolina uh, for on-site support for my company to pass through Gaffney, mm-hmm. South Carolina, at the uh, at the outlets there to buy my father a Clemson shirt that I think he should wear proudly as an alum because to make it all the way to the game and to make it a game mm-hmm. is something to be proud of. So, yep. yes, uh, definitely a golf clap to Alabama and their 16th championship in 2016. But super proud uh, of our closest uh, in conference rival in Clemson. Uh, they 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 did as much as you would ever want from it was a team a, to do. You know, it was a hell of a season. It was really. I just got goosebumps again. There they yeah, are. There was ten million dollars lost when they scored their final touchdown. That's how much of. I mean, that's how you know it was a game. Mm-hmm. It was a game. What a hell of a game to watch too. Holy mackerel, that was. It was twenty four to twenty four at the end of the third quarter. That's, Ended up forty five to forty. Yeah, that's woo! what you want to see out of a championship game. I mean, Ric Flair. Woo! <laughs> Let's start closing this thing out, man. Uh, uh, was there anything that. else? I don't think so. I think. I don't uh, think so. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, you know, boom, ba dum, ba Yeah, there's there's I mean, the tunes. Uh, well, y'all, you can follow us. Yeah, Red uh, Brick, Sweetwater, thank you. Yeah, thank Wild you for the, turkey. For the unofficial uh, sponsorship here. But uh, as always, I'm Tailgate Mayor at Tailgate Mayor Rusty Wallace. As always, joined by... You're so simple. Uh, <laughs> yours is so much easier than mine. I, I'm pre-game engineer. I'm pre-game ENG. <laughs> um, and you can also follow me on Instagram, all lower crease. Oh, man, the grammar. Pre-game ENG. That a boy. And then the podcast has its own email address. The G-Chat. We'll work towards Facebook at some point. But it's all lowercase, P-E-T-M podcast at gmail.com. Y'all hit us up on the G-Chat. Hit me up on the G-Chat. <laughs> we'll talk to y'all next week. This is fun as hell, man. Yeah, this was awesome. Thumbs up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>